I was laying in my bed one night. You know, I mean, I was just, just laying there. I don't remember what night it was, but I remember it was pretty late. And the light was on in the hallway. I was still awake. But I was kind of asleep, but I was still awake. And back then, you know, they wouldn't let you into schools, and yet God opened the door. I never told you all this before. I never told you this. I've never told this story to anybody, because I don't know if anybody believed me, but there's a reason I want to say it to you because of his voice. I had no idea that I was going to have a school ministry, that I was going to be preaching in schools for the next two years, and he would open doors. But he did. And I did. that's the first time really I've ever been, you know, I really got started doing what I'm doing today. But what it was was the night that I was laying in my bed. You know, I can understand why people didn't want to hear God's voice because God's voice is incredibly powerful. And I'm laying there in my bed and I heard this if it sounded like a hundred trumpet blasts. And that's the reason I guess that, that, I, that I just kept going louder and louder with holy because that's what I felt led that I needed to do by the Spirit of God. Maybe for this reason, to let you know about His voice. His voice can be as still as water. But He can also speak loudly. And the rest of it's not important. It's not about me, but He did speak to me that night. He spoke to me in an audible voice. He said something to me. But the reason I'm telling you this whole story is because maybe we need to begin to pray, God, will you speak just a little bit louder so I can hear you? Come on, come on, help me pray. Say, God, speak just a little bit louder. Let me know. He'll do that for you. But you've got to ask Him. He'll speak. He'll show you. The scripture that comes to mind as I close is in John, the 15th chapter. About abiding in the vine. That means when you live for God. Now, I want everybody to understand one last thing before I close. When you live for God, truly live for God, there's just a knowing there's a knowing it on the inside of every one of you. There's a knowing. And there should be an expectancy. And a hunger. Because he said, if you will abide in this vine, my vine, the true vine. He didn't say the choicest vine. The devil will offer you a lot of good looking vines, but it's not the true vine. Do you remember when Samson went down to the valley of Sorek? And Delilah was down there waiting for him. If you ever studied that out in the valley of Sork, you know what Sork means? It means the choicest vine. It looks good. Boy, it does. It, it appeases the flesh. You've got to stay on guard. That's why God said you've got to watch. Amen. Be abiding in the vine, watching and patiently waiting for the one. And then my last scripture today. Stand with me. In Luke chapter 21 Jesus said this himself. And when these things what are these things? All these signs that he talked about. Oh and I heard him tell me and by the way just now there's nothing not anything not, not one jot not one tittle that needs to take place nothing before he can take us out of here. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. And I want to tell you the only reason, and the only reason that we're even still here is because of the Father. He's the one that knows it. Not the Son, not the angels, not me. But I know part of it. I know the good part. I don't know the whole part because God's not going to let anybody know when He tells His Son. But I do know this. What I just told you. There's nothing nothing holding you here and one of these days there's going to be one word that's going to be given and it's not going to hold you here anymore when these things he said begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh you know I studied that word I wanted to study so strongly to make sure I got my point across for the Lord today that I've done my job you know, that word lift there is when it talks about when the wind begins to blow in such a way that it's never blown before. And it means on a sail, like on a sailboat, you're to, that's when you're to lift your sail. And what happens, that wind will carry you up. It will 
The Bible says it will raise the word, if you want to study it in the Hebrew text, which I did in the Greek and Hebrew, it means to be raised up. It means like a sail. My God, we're getting ready to be sailing out of here as we lift up our heads because we know the time is nigh. Even now, He's ready to come. I, I believe it. What a great time to be alive. So I want to ask you today, I want to see your hands. I want you to make, I can't do it for you, but I want you to make a, I, I can't even say make a promise, but I just want you of your own free will. How many would say today, God, I'm going to make you the 100%, the number one priority of my life from this day forward. Let me see your hands. I could give an altar call, but this is going to be up to you. It's going to be up to me. The other day a man came to me and he made the greatest statement I've ever heard made because of the time we live. He said, you know, it's these little things. Spoil our vine. The little things. And what those foxes represent the powers of darkness, the powers of hell. They gnaw at the vine that we're attached to. I told God the other day to remove the teeth of the devil. I began to pray that. Remove his teeth. Let his teeth fall out. Let his jaws drop. Let his jaws lock. You say, you're crazy, preacher. I might be a little bit, but that's a good way to pray. Amen. Hey, somebody, say, let the devil shut his mouth and not open his teeth up again. Will you raise your hands to God and thank him today because our king is coming suddenly. said, I want you to tell him. Father, today, your word is true. Jamie, I want you to get that song again and sing it. You just sung it. Your word is he said, look at me, is a lamp. Come on, keep worshiping. Keep your hands raised to God. Say, Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Your word, O oh Lord, is forever settled in heaven. God, you said in your word, if I would meditate in your word day and night, then I would have good success. Lord, you said you are the word made flesh. You are the Son of God and dwelt among us. We beheld the only begotten Son of God in all of his glory. Lord, today we declare this generation, God. Lord, today by faith we're looking to you. Lord, we ask you now to come and to minister to your church and to minister to your people, God, through this song that Jamie's about to sing. Lord, let us know that, God, this word is a word of love and it's a word of encouragement today to your church, God. The Lord is saying, look up. Don't look down. For your King cometh suddenly. If you believe it, let's worship Him today. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.